Hello YouTubers, you're watching Crafts at Home with Lisa. I'm Lisa and today we're going to have a look at doing sweet pea in um, polymer clay. Now I use Fimo, I don't, I've never used any of the other brands. Um, I did try Arteza which was great but you couldn't buy them in individual colours, so you had to buy them as a pack. So I didn't like those, so I used up what I had and then I, I didn't use them again. So I always use Fimo. Um, although recently I have tried the air dry clay and, and I, the hearty clay and I really struggled with it. But I will do a video on that and we'll see how we go with that. So for today I'm going to take you through every aspect of making a sweet pea. So I've got these they're all all over the place different stages so I can show you each stage and how to do a couple of each so firstly you buy um, which I've actually forgotten bear with me sorry about that folks right okay so I've been and got it the the set now bizarrely enough I didn't even know I had this till the other night what I originally did with the bouquets and the flowers was I went along and I downloaded a free sweet pea cutter set. Cut it out and that was how I was getting my shapes. And then I ordered this set and it was like £3 something off of Amazon. And then I was going through all my, my cutters and everything and I found this set, of course, another set of sweet pea. However, what I do have on my side is that one is slightly smaller than the other. If you can see that, this one's smaller than this one. So that works in my favour. And it also came with, um, I think that's a flower one, but they usually come with something that looks like that that's smaller, which is for the calyx on the bottom. Now, I don't use calyxes on the bottom of mine, and I'll show you in a minute for why. So when I cut my shapes out, I only use these ones. Let me zoom you in. Oh. I only use these shapes because these ones I find very, very fiddly. Because of this, this bit here, it, it's obviously supposed to separate and hang back but I don't like that and because the clay is heavier um, than fondant it doesn't tend to stay there so this part of it I don't use so on neither of these am I going to use either of these um, they're both relatively the same sort of shape just one slightly smaller than the other okay so you can use those if you want to use both of them that's up to you but I, do, I don't, I choose not to. So the, with these two, what I then next do is roll out some fond uh, fondant clay and cut out, you want three of these, five of these and two buds. So <coughs> I cut them all out. So here they are all cut out into their correct shape so that's one two three one two three four five oh i've got six one too many but you get the gist it's just the five that you want so we'll just pop that one over here so once they're cut out like this then i like to do if you're going to dust it i would bring it over here and the next step for me is you have to ex please do excuse my my uh, sponge board it's had a lot of use and then I just go around and I just um, with a ball tool just to make the edges frilly now I do use two because if I pull one of these up if I do one of the big ones now some people spread them wide some people um, like them round it's entirely up to you but I like to use the big ball tool first because that gives me sorry a little bit of cornflour just to make sure that nothing sticks it will brush off afterwards don't worry and then I use the big ball tool to come along and just go round the edges 
Oh, I'm right on the edge there. So it makes quite a large curve. That's great. But I want it smaller than that, personally. My sweet peas, I remember my granddad growing on his allotment while I was growing up. Um, I never used to like them because they always used to, he used to say to me, you plant sweet pea to attract the aphids, um, to stop them going on his vegetables. But I always remember they were very pretty and they come pretty much in any colour you like, which is the other good thing I like about them. Now you can use them as fillers, you can use them as a natural main flower, or you can use them cascading down the side if you're doing a, a bouquet, that sort of thing. Even in vase or something like that, that would also work. Um, or you could have them just at the sides, sort of facing out. They look, they're very, very pretty when they're done. So all I do then is just go round the edge. See how it's making a tighter, tighter curve. So round the edge again, all the way round, and don't forget to flat out your little doofy bit as well. Okay, so I'm I'm quite happy with that. If any areas that you think are still a bit flat, just go over them with your ball tool. There you go, and then that stands out beautifully. Now at this point. I've been looking into um, colouring clay once it had been baked and I've tried pastel colours, I've tried paints, I've tr nothing am I happy with. And obviously when you come to build up these flowers, they're quite, um, when you go to put them in the oven, I bake mine made up and so should everybody, but it's very difficult to get any colour. I like the colours. Ooh, I like the darker edges on mine, if you can see that. Just like down this part here and along these bits. And I do like to have um, like a colour on it if possible. So I dust my main colour on it. I don't do my edges until it goes, before it goes into the oven. Okay, so now we've got it at this stage. And if you notice, this time I've used, um, I've kind of mingled together a pink and a purple. So it's kind of a bit swirly if you have a look at that. If you can see, each one's a bit different. They're very nice. Very pretty. Just gives it a little bit more of a texture. Um, let me put those out of the way. So let me put that back on those ones over there because that's where it's going to stay because it's for that set. Right, so we get to this stage and I then go along and I bend some wires. Don't worry about it too much size-wise as long as it's got a little hook on the, on the end. So when you put it in and turn it, it kind of hooks into the clay. Okay, so you want seven because you want two buds I mean you can do more than that if you wanted to but I I decide I, I'm very regimental and I very much like to know what I'm doing and when I'm doing it so two buds one two so I make all my buds and put them on my 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 metal wires these are an 18 gauge um because I like them fairly thick so I am completely in control when you bend them they stay there um, I don't like ones that roll and wrap around and do all sorts of funky things. Okay, and then you have five of these centre buds. Now with these ones, if you can see, that is the start of the inside petal of your sweet pea. So to do that, we are going to get our bent wire, like so. And Fimo liquid clay. I'm just going to squirt a bit down here because I like to make sure I've got some clay on it so it, when it goes in the oven, it doesn't move. So this stuff's great. It bonds it beautifully. So with that, we're going to get, there's our lump of clay. Let me move this back a little bit. Sorry, folks. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so with our lump of clay, it's just a normal lump of clay, we're going to break off a small ball. Now the buds you can do any size, it doesn't matter if they're bigger, smaller, well it doesn't matter, it really doesn't. But I like my inner inner piece 
that I'm going to put on my very first piece on here. I like them to be fairly fairly small. So there's my ball. It might be a little bit too small. It's a bit ambitious, perhaps. Um, you want it really just about just a nice size ball, like marble size, not very big. Well, the other thing is when you're measuring it out, and you've got it in a point because you want to get it into a cylindrical tri sort of a triangle shape. Teardrop. That's the better shape. If you measure it from there to there, you'll know if it's going to be too big or not. So with that now, I'm just going to roll it into a point, like so. Goodness, my board is it's cornflower. Um, like that. And I'm going to dip my end of just the end of my wire into the liquid clay. And then I'm going to push it in. Like so. It's going to squish it a little bit. Don't panic. And then you're going to twist the wire in there. Just a half a click round and put it down a little bit. Okay, now you're just going to seal it at the bottom because you can see you've got a hole. So just squeeze it around the wire. And it should stick because there's probably some of the liquid clay that when the wire went in, they left it down here. Okay, so there you go. So that is, I'm very pleased with that. Oh, it's the pattern. I thought it looked dirty. I was going to say it hasn't been anywhere. So there you go is that. Now keep your fingers um, corn flour on there because this can get a little bit sticky and you don't really want the stickiness on your fingers for this bit. So once you're nice and sealed and you're at the bottom, I look round at mine and see if it's got a fat belly anywhere and I can see instantly that that's like, just turn it. And you can see this piece here is fatter than the rest. So that's the bit I'm going to go for. There will always be, I don't know why with me, but I mean you could look for a fatter side or if there's no fat sides then just do it on our, any of the sides. Okay, so this is what we're going to do with it now. You're just going to gently pinch. Just gently, put your finger behind it if you find it's bending. Just pinch all the way up to the top. This is another reason you don't really want sticky fingers. Because if you have sticky fingers, it makes very hard work and it will rip the clay. So right down to the bottom, right up to the top. Now the thinner you squeeze the clay, the more it will wibble, what I call wibble, see? Because it can't be just straight, it's got to be wibbly. If, goodness, my cat just made me jump. If you're finding it's not doing it, be, don't try and squeeze anymore because A, you'll end up with it too long, and then B, it will break, and C, you'll not be happy with it. Just use a, pen, a paintbrush or a pencil, whatever you've got, and just gently sort of squeeze it if you can see that. And then I'm going to do it again. You can see where it's naturally trying to go. If you don't have a natural squeezy bit like that, just make one. It's okay. Like so. So there you go. There's your first bit. So you want to pull that edge out like a fan. And that sort of sticks on the side. Okay, so that's your first one done. Now I'll go through and make five of those. So I don't have to worry about making five of them in a minute. So let me put that one back there. Well, actually, that's off the other one, isn't it? Let's stick it outside. And let me show you how I do the bed. Sorry, I've got an awfully dry mouth and my coffee fairy's not here. He's bopped out. Right. If by some chance you get a small hole in one, don't panic. It's No flower is the same and they're obviously at some point in their life... Um, you're going to get bits like that in it. It just makes it look more realistic. Obviously, if you've got a great big hoofing bit missing, that's not going to work. But you might like that. I know that on you put the last one on, if you lay it right back, it means that it's actually going over. So it's like that. But so I like, but I like mine quite closed up. Um, that's about as as far back as I want mine to go. If you can see, there's three layers. Like so. Um, <coughs> right, bud. 
So we get our next wire. Like I say, I always do things in the sevens. Um, so I'll cut seven wires. I'll hook seven wires round on the end. And then I'll do my seven buds. So two buds, five inside pieces. Right, so let's go. Let me move that back out of the way a little bit. Right, so this time you want to take a, a lump a little bit bigger than what we used before. Because this, it doesn't matter if it's bigger, smaller, it doesn't matter. All the buds come in lots of different sizes. Um, no two buds are the same. So I'm just going to put a little bit more. So that's my, uh, my baby puppy. Well, she's not a puppy anymore. And that's the old lady. Chewing on her own leg. She'll probably make herself cry in a minute. She looks at you while you're doing it as well because she knows she's only playing. Right, so into this, this triangular slate, teardrop shape again, like so. Now you want the clay to be fairly soft but not really, really soft and sticky because then it causes, again, problems. So get your wire, like so. I'm going to dip it in, like so, and then we're going to just pop it up inside. I might move these back because I don't know whether that's making it harder for you to see. That's better. The blue wasn't doing me any favours, I don't think. Um, and then pinch it down like you did before. Now, bear in mind, this is quite a thick, much bigger piece. Um, so it's easier to work with, easier to play with. And since I've had my nails put on for my daughter's wedding, I've had to redo the way I do clay work because it just leaves honking great big nail marks in it. Please do excuse the colours of my hands as well. I've been messing with red dyes and whatnot. Trying to find out what works on, on baked clay. And I'm, I'm just not satisfied with what it looks like. So I'm not doing it no more. So this way. So what we're going to do here is get one of these tools. This was just a cheap pack of tools. It's just bladed. If you haven't got one of these, you can use a point tool. You could even use a cocktail stick. You could use the edge of a ruler. You could use... There's lots and lots of different things. As long as it's got a straight edge and it's not ever so short, it will work. So starting at the bottom, keeping it straight, I put my one finger behind and pull it upwards and drag it off. So if you can see that line... And I'm just going to go and do it again, just to make sure it's deep enough. Try and keep to the same line, because otherwise it will cause you lots of hassle. And you'll have to start again. So then I pinch the top up, like it's, so it goes pointy, like so. And then the buds just lean back, just like so. So make sure you've got a nice pointy bit on the top. And that's that. That is how you do a bird. Very simple, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so that's that one done. So that's of that part there. So the next thing I would do is colour. Now, I've been struggling, like I say, with looking at colour. Because these are so, um, not flimsy as such. But they are quite uh, delicate. So this is, at this point... Is when I would, if I'm going to, I would colour these. Front and back, dust them in, in the way. I like, just like, it's called shadow dusting, I believe. Where you don't get a heavy onset of colour. I like to just do a little bit. But because this time I've, I've mixed the clay, I'm not actually going to colour the petals. What I will do is, once they're on, which I'll show you in a second... I want to just do the edge, so it would be um, this bit, just up here. If you can see, I like it a little bit darker th there, and then I do try and like brush down any loose powder down here. If I don't want the powder on there, just give it a blow and it will come off. Okay, so let's have a little look. Let's put my little piece of clay over there. Now, out of my Arteza powders, the mica powders, I've actually found the best things that do cover the best are 
mica powders. I've tried pastels, I've tried food colours, I've tried paints, I've tried mixing it with vodka, I've tried having just a wet brush and it just doesn't work. You can use um, dust, uh, like fondant dusts, but again I still find them quite cloggy if you like. It's not an even colour. The only one that I found is a really even colour is the mica powders. I don't know whether it's because they're such high pigment, I don't know. But I'm sticking to my mica powders now, so unfortunately for my husband, it means I've got to go out and order a load now that aren't sparkly, because that's all I've got. So today I'm going to try uh, Chameleon Blue, this is called. Now if you can see the tub, amazing, look at that. So I'm guessing it's going to change lots of colours. So I'm going to put a little bit on some kitchen roll because bear in mind this time all I want to do is just do the edges. Do you know what ladies and gentlemen I haven't put any of the petals on. What a wally. Right stop rewind. Start again. So this is what we've got. Sorry ladies and gentlemen I got a bit ahead of myself then. Right, let me move these two off here because they're off the next set. Right, so here we have some seven buds and petals. So we're going to take each one and we're going to turn it into a flower now. So bear in mind, two of them are just small buds. So that means you're just going to take two of these size and just do two buds. So if I show you what I mean, because I'm babbling a bit, sorry. So I'm going to use a little bit of glue and I'm going to go straight down that middle. Now the liquid clay can be a little bit on the sticky side so do just be aware of that. And I like to fan it out to the sides just a little bit because I like mine sort of closed a little bit more. I go about two thirds of the way up and then it turns over and sticks to my sponge. Okay so that's what we've got. Oh my goodness, it goes so sticky, it's very difficult to um, manage. I'm making a right pig's ear out of this. Right, so pick up one of your buds. And all you want to do is just touch it on there, like so. Pick it up, let me move that blue board because it's um, obscuring it. Pick it up, now this little tag bit here is designed to go around the base of your... Um, your, your wire is the theory but sometimes if you've got a larger bud like I have center it won't quite reach you can try and push it around if you wanted to which I generally do until it sort of gets there like so and that's the first one on now if you stop at that one that is a small one that is a half a half flower Okay, so we'll put that down here with the buds now because that one's done. So we're going to pick another small one for the next one. Let's put it on here for now so you can see it. And we're going to come along with the glue again. It's exactly the same place. So just spray it out to the side a little bit and about two thirds down. Making sure you get a nice amount on there because you want it on that little tab at the bottom there. Because that's the bit you really want it to stick. So, get another bud. So, if you've got your preparation done beforehand and you've done your five buds and you've done um, your, not your five, your five centres, you have two buds and you have cut and you've done your, your ball tooling on the petals, it makes it very easy and very quick or quicker to make the flowers. Okay. So, Again, you're just going to press it on like you did the first time. This one must be a very fat one. But don't worry about it because I, a lot of people may not use it. I don't know. And I may be doing it not 100% correct, but it's 100% what I like. And that's what it boils down to. Now, bear in mind, before I did my last video, I'd never made a flower other than a rose, which was one of my very first videos which I'm sure you'll agree, I look back on it and it, it makes me 
cringe um but it was it was a good video and it's it's been well watched so now that's sticking out the top a little bit so just assess each one as you do it see how that's sticking out the top it shouldn't be sticking out the top quite so much so i'm going to use this one and i'm going to put an outside petal on this one so always look at it if it looks great as a just a tour just use it as a two okay so i'm going to get a big one now there we go and i'm just gonna then do exactly the same straight down the middle like so the other thing is if you hold on to the top where you're trying to glue it will stretch the top so it's probably not a great idea to do so if you roll the brush if you notice i'm rolling it with the glue on it and it does make it a little bit more on the stick side And there we go so exactly the same way again make sure your little nodule bits down like so oh, the lighting in here today is horrendous it's because we keep getting rain clouds i think rainstorms so you've got your your inside bit and your outside bit and now you're gonna set that down on there like so and then you're going to lift with it now all these bits of cornflower will come off when you do the dusting which i'll show you in a minute so you're going to wrap that round the base like we did before oh that's it my dogs are drinking that's half a gallon of water on the floor and then you're just going to push it up to where you like it now you can pinch it if you want to or you can you can close it up a little bit more it really is up to you now i've got here my porky tool like so and basically i just pull out and tease out any um curls that, that i've got like so okay and it's probably still a little bit big for the back petal but i like it so that's i'm going to use it you could push it up against the petal so it makes sure that it takes your eye off of it a little bit like so but i don't remember any of my granddad's sweet peas looking all so regimented they're all very very different so that's how you do your full one so we'll go through now and we'll just do another full one so you want another little one like so make sure your little pointy bit's down and we're just going to apply the glue again remember if you want to go to the sides roll it don't hold on to the top to do it because it will stretch it that's the other thing watch it doesn't roll it over and stick it to itself because that will be an absolute nightmare and you may as well just start again with that one petal okay so let's do that so you get your center bud again your curly edge and you're just going to set it down in there now these tabs if you met when you line it up to stick them together if you put the bottom of the flower at the top of the tab that leaves the whole tab then the whole tab then to wrap around the stem like so and then just tightly sort of like so and then tuck it into where you want it to be like so that's my favorite words like so okay now i think i can hear the coffee fairy what should we see should we ask hey coffee fairy is the coffee fairy here me? yes please mr coffee fairy can i have a coffee and there you go just like that the coffee fairy came home right so we need a big one next so there's quite a bit of cornflour on there so i'm just going to brush that off gently i don't want all of that on there and again we're just going to straight down the middle roll it if it starts to pull it and a little bit down the sides i'm like the side wings now this is the one that's got a small rip in it 
I'm not worried about it. It depends if you want it to look regimental, like I say, or um, make it look nat natural. Okay, so then we're going to put it down there, sort of rub it a little bit, and then it brings it up because it's stuck to it, and you're just going to wrap that round again. Tucking that bottom in, because you know if that's in place, you know the whole thing's in place. So we're going to just wrap the bottom round like we did before. Like so. And there we go. So just tuck your edges in where you want them. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know that. That's my uh, lady. I don't want to say her name because it will set her off again. Being very nosy and thinking she's listening in on a conversation. But as you know, we didn't say her name, so I don't know what's going on with her. Right. Okay. So there's another one. So literally, we're just going to keep going round until we get to the end of them. So here's the next one. So we'll see how close that is and how well it sits. There's a folded over the edge there, look. Just go along with the point you tool. You don't need one of these. You can just use a, a cocktail stick. You can use what really whatever it is you want. Okay. There we go. So now we're just going to get the centre bud again. And we're just going to push it on. Just gently push it on. Like so. And just lift it up. And then we're going to pull it down because I want that round the, the stem again. I don't know why, my, my first one always goes to the side. But I'm not going to lose any sleep over it, it's fine. I rub it together and it just kind of disappears. Now this one, as you can see, is actually a little bit small for the bud. So I'm just going to put a bit of glue behind this bit, because I'd like this one to stay behind there, like so, like that. She's going to do it again. I don't know what she thinks she's listening to. It. She's just turned off. There you go. So that's the first one on. Now because that one's poking out the top, same as the last one, I'm going to use this one as the threeer. And okay. I do apologise if that aggravates anyone. I, it's just something I say all the time. I think. Right, here we go. Remember to roll it to get it off. Roll it to the sides, like the side wings. And roll it to the other side. You could, if you wanted to, just gently hold the top like I did then. That's up to you. If you want to do that. Okay. And we're going to do exactly the same again. Making sure that the this little... Wing, a little nodule bit here is at the bottom. We're going to lay it on, which will then pick it up, and we're going to fold them round. Now, because obviously I like my wings tucked in, it means I can tuck the whole bottom half round, and it just sits really nicely. And there's another one. I'm very pleased with that one. So, one more. It doesn't take long to do them because, like I say, we were very organised and we um, we glued and, and did everything we needed to do. And then it, it kind of sets it because I do it in a set of seven. Cut seven wires. Turn the tips over on seven wires. Put five set centre buds on there and, and two actual buds. And then come along, cut my petals. Um use the ball tools on my petals and, and wave them and then I can stick them on and then because I haven't got to stop to do something it it just kind of all flows I mean it's up to you you could do them individually one at a time and then so bend your wire cut your wire do what you need to do with your wire it's up to you that's just how I like to do it so that way then we can get them in the oven as one whole piece so there we go so I've rolled it now bear in mind this is the last one we've got no no bigger pieces so hopefully our little inner bud is big enough so we're going to just set it down like that 
wrap that round. I do sorry, I apologise everyone if, if I keep going off, off screen a little bit. There we go. And that's that then, like so. Right, so the next thing we have to do, or the one that I like to do, it's only up to you if you want to do it, this is where we're going to use our chameleon now. So I'm just going to tip a small amount, because I don't want huge amounts. Tip a little bit out on the, you can always put more on, you can't, it's very difficult to get it back in the pot. I'm going to tip large amounts out, because I only want to do the edges. Now this is going to be extremely hard to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go up the inside of this bud. Now I want some to spill out a little bit because I want it to... You can use your fingers if you wanted to, just to rub it round. So if you wanted to do it like that, but what I didn't want is see these patches. I didn't really want to use have patches. I'm just going to try a bigger brush and see what happens. And just give it a good kind of brush, which seems to. I've got more on there than I wanted, but the buds are, f are funny things because they're a large, smooth expanse. It makes it a bit difficult just to put a little bit of colour on. I do not like patchy. I really don't. It looks, as far as I'm, I'm. I mean, it's it's down to everybody's choice. If you like patchy, you know that's okay. It's just something that I don't like. So there we go, the bud looks like it's going to have to be all in one colour. But it's a beautiful colour. Look at that. Right, so that one's that one's done. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I really wanted to do just these edges. So I'm just going to tilt it downwards. Now bear in mind these uncooked clay. Because you don't want to cook it because this will not stick to it. Mica powders will not. And they will not work. And then just pull it down on the back just a little bit. So it doesn't look so. Like so. Okay, we're going to do this one. She's definitely up to no good. We're just going to do the inside of these. And like I say, pull the colour down because you don't want it to just look like it's just kind of plonked there. It needs to have, if we go downwards, it just kind of pulls it down. Okay, and now the last edge, we'll have a look and see what we've got. I like the darker edges, I really like the darker edges. So again, pull back your edges like so, and on the inside, like so. Now, I am very, very happy with that. Very happy. If I can show you there, look. Now, if you can see the colour. Oh. The two colours I mixed together in the clays. They're coming on the back beautifully. So when we top coat this, it'll make a huge difference. I think that's really, really pretty. And I've got what I wanted. The edges are just slightly darker than the actual flower. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how I am going to dust that, that set. I'm just going to pop this over there because I don't want to waste any. Just fold it into my piece of paper. Tissue. Okay, so from that point, I would have my clay go in the oven and have it cooked. 
So at that point, let me stick those over there. They would come out looking like this. Now, I'm very lucky because my husband would then take them straight out of the oven, wait for them to cool down, and then he would take them outside and dust them with a matte dust top coat. I think it's rust off we use. And that I'm very, very pleased. I've got gloss and I've got um, matte. On the bouquet, we used mainly matte. It was just the odd leaf we used, um, like lily leaves and things like that, which I didn't actually get around to putting some in. But the lily leaves are the ones you can do in a gloss. So there you go. And I've got my dark edge there, like I like. Like I like I like I. Okay, so the next thing I have to do is wrap it. Just there. Okay, wrappings, nobody's, nobody likes wrapping because it never goes according to plan and mine always slips down so I'll show you how I do it it's probably incorrect but it's how I found it works for me okay so we're going to rip a piece of this off and now some people don't stretch it until they're actually using it I stretch mine beforehand and sometimes I'll cut them in half just down the middle there I don't have a funky machine all I have is a pair of scissors and then from there you want to just tug on it and it will stretch and open up and start the properties of the wax and it becomes very sticky see so that when you're wrapping it the wax should stick together and it should make it um, very easy let me just move this back slightly okay that's better so I start at the top here, like so, and I wrap it round. And then I twist it a little bit. So I always end up with a fat piece at the top here, but it does work for me. So push that up before you go any further, otherwise it won't move. And then I always put it in one hand so I control it with this. So this hand is going round, pushing it round. So it's like um, rubbing the wax together afterwards. And this hand and the finger and thumb here, they it holds it and it, rum, it rubs the wax together there. So it technically gets two lots of squeezing. And then as for the tape, I hold it between these two fingers. So my pinky, the next one in, and there's my middle finger. I hold it there. So it keeps it under control behind. Okay. So I wrap and twist, wrap and twist like so holding it and squeezing it so it um, it sort of melts onto each other, sticks to each other. And then, because I'm fed up with my bottom bit, keep coming off, and it always does. Never does it on anybody else's videos. I've looked on the internet, I don't know why. But it must just be me. So I pull mine down. And it goes right to the bottom, and it doesn't come off, and it's kind of, it pulls and sticks it into place. So like that, so literally just pull it down. But as you're pulling it down, rub it, like so. And then you end up with a pretty flat, not bad piece of wrapping. The other thing I fe uh, forgot to mention, actually, when we were doing the dusting, this is at this point when you could put a calyx on the bottom. Just, so you cut it out in green, just slide it on. I personally am not really interested in having a calyx. Um, I find it looks too bulky and too much going on there. I thought I brought a green in with me, but I haven't. Oh, I could have sworn I did. Um, but what I do is I go around the bottom with a green um, food dye. Because I don't want it all f posh and flash. And I just want a flat food dye colour. And I just dust the very bottom here, just up to sort of where it just starts to, just sort of up to about there. And then just dust it up like that, up into the plant a little bit, and it finishes it beautifully. If I show you one, if you look at the bottom of that one, can you see the green? Just on there. 
that to me I think looks better than a calyx on it. You might decide to use a calyx. Do do so if you decide to. Do do so. But I like the simplicity of this one. So there you go. I just forgot to mention that bit and I thought oh, better how to because it's something that is a problem. Right. Now how do we make the round the curly bits? So get a piece of stretched tape and roll it in your fingers. So just roll it as tight as you can get it. Like so. And then I go I do big ones and then I cut them. But it would be entirely up to you how you did it. Now these are meant to be, you can have them curly, you can have them sticking out, you can have them whichever way you want to. So this last one I should just leave it so it gives me something to hold on to when I add it to it. Like so. I mean you could keep it that length, which I might want to do. I generally put two to three in each one. Now grab a paintbrush and wrap it. Now hold on to the end because you don't want it to come apart and wrap and just keep going. Pulling it fairly tight, not too tight. But as you hold it, it'll actually stay on there and mould to that shape. That's quite a large one. I might just trim the end off that and we'll put two in this one. Okay, and if you can see there, you have your curly. Let me push that back which is absolutely beautiful. Okay, and there you go. So that bit I could add into it, or I could, I'm gonna keep that that length. I wasn't going to, but I will. So let's cut another little bit off, because I only want a little one this time. So just start like so, and just literally roll it, like that. Roll it roll it, roll it, there we go, it sometimes can be a little bit tricky to start but it's not too bad. Right now a lot of people will use this to go on the very end of the wire which I like the idea of doing but that one's not long enough so perhaps we'll put three in there then. So we'll take that off Like so, and we're going to roll it like we did last time. Now the next piece I'm going to do, which is going to be a fairly long piece, because I need it to go over the very top and we're going to roll it as well, and it's going to go right down the stem. So there's another one. And this is our last one, so we're going to go quite long. Like so. And pull it to release the wax like we did before okay all the way down and we're going to start it with a curl oh don't want it in there we're going to start it with a curl on this this is on the very tip of the branch okay I just know I don't me and I'm not overly keen on the little eight-legged beasts. And we have had so many spiders. The last week it's been awfully bad. And whether it's because of the weather outside's changed or whether the atmosphere's got a bit chillier. Okay, and we're going to curl it like we did the others. Just to start it. Like so. Because what we're going to do with this, what we're going to do with this piece is we're going to roll it all the way down. Okay. There we go. So we let that come off. Pull it a little bit. Right. So we're going to get our wire. Again, I'm going to use my 18 gauge. I'm going to twist the end. Just to make a little hook. Now this time you don't really want a very big one. Some people don't bother. I like to have something that it can grip hold of, just a little bit of something. So literally all you need to do is just squeeze. Ugh. 
So it's just a little, just a small one. Just so it's not completely flat. Right. Let's try that coffee that the coffee fairy dropped off for me. So if you can see where you finished rolling it, it comes to a point. Now if you can get your wire, now this is fiddly, I'm not going to lie to you, it really is fiddly. So I tighten mine inside there and then I wrap. Now it doesn't matter if it's a little bit thicker on this end because you've got your this bit coming off the end. So and then literally get it into place like so. I find that I have to literally manually wrap them round to start with. And there it's on there. So it's not oh horrendously bad, if you can see. It's not too bad at all. And if you squeeze it, it will it will tighten down a little bit. There you go. Right, so we're going to start with a bud. Now I'd like to leave a plenty of it out because then I can bend them afterwards. So I'm going to put my bud there, like so. And I'm just going to wrap, oh, wrap around it. That's the trouble with having a long piece. It can get in your way sometimes if it doesn't go round. Okay, so I'm just going to pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. Now these are staggered. They're not like some leaves where you get them the next one here. These are staggered. So the next one we're going to put in is a bud. Now bear in mind they don't need to be all be the same size wires. They're all different. There's no one plant in the world. Well, not that I know. I'm sure there probably is, but not that I I would I would build. I like to have a variation on everything I do because it makes it more um more realistic okay and we're just going to wrap it around like so pull it quite tight but not too tight because what you'll end up doing is ripping it and what we're going to do is we're going to bend these afterwards okay Ooh. so next we're going to put some half half flowers on i don't think i yeah I've done, what i've done on this one for a bit of variation as well is done one half one and the other four are whole flowers so I'm going to bend it again, and this time it's going to go this side. Now I like mine quite close together, otherwise I, f I find that they're just a little bit too gappy. And I quite like a bit more closer. But it's up to you, again, like I say, you, you do exactly what you like. Look at some pictures on your, on internet of um, honey... Uh, Oh my goodness, I nearly said honeysuckle, of sweet pea and just see what it is and what shapes you like and all that sort of thing. Now the next one, we've got four left of these ones now, full flowers. So we're going to do four, four, four full flowers now. Well, that was a bit of a mouthful. Okay, and we're just going to keep it going down. Now I don't like putting leaves on mine either, especially if you're using them in like a bouquet like I did because I just felt like it was a bit extra that we didn't need. More greenery that to put away, if you like. So next one, again, not too far down. As long as they're not opposite each other, that'll be absolutely fine. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what we'll put in this time. In here, should we put in one of our twizzles? Right, it gets pretty hard to hold on to so just so you know it can be a bit fiddly so I'm just going to push that down and wrap it around the stem because it's the green and then we're going to add this one in now that we were going to add in this side if you do end up bending them like I'm doing right now don't worry they will go back we can straighten them out after Sorry, I keep going off camera. It's because it's so it's a really awkward one to do. It's the wrapping because there is such a long 
long piece that you have to do so I do apologize do bear with me right I'm going to put this one on oh my goodness when I'm wrapping main stems I tend to keep my tape completely whole I don't ever half it because it just I feel like it gives it that just that little bit more um, support right, okay so the next one we've got is I don't know what I've done with them I reckon I must have got one right we've got two in there so we'll stick with two um, I was going to put another Twizzly bit in but it doesn't matter and then this last one will go here on the very bottom like so when I get hold of it okay now some people will tell you that wrapping like I've just done is bad and it probably isn't good but when you've got big ones like this unfortunately it's the only way to do it so you're going to just draw all the way down now don't go right the way down to the bottom all you want to do is leave like one third at the bottom because when it's in a bouquet or it's in an arrangement of some sort nobody's going to see it anyway the only time I would go right to the bottom is if you're going to have it as a single or a very small uh, posy of some description or, or display so that if you know that somebody's going to see it then really it should you should make sure you can't see any wire okay now I'm going to keep it at that and I'm going to pull it down like I always do just to make sure it's well and truly stuck so this is what we have now it's still a bit sort of straight on command sort of scenario so you need to get everything where it should be if you've got any loose ones push them down they'll go into that like so okay now the these have a funny bend in them so it's like it comes out like that and then I bend mine down and then up pushing your fingers in the middle like that if you can see that oh see that and then I do that to all of them so literally down and then up if you're struggling to do that you could use a brush like so and then just kind of push it around a brush but I, I struggle to do that but there are people that do that but I just put my finger in the middle and push it down like so there you go and same with the buds and this side if you've got one that's slightly too long and it's aggravating you I can twist those over to the other side the other thing that I'll do before I do anything else is twist the body on it so like it's starting with an S so it goes round like so and back the other way and back the other way so it's in like a bit of a an S kind of shape now I can tell straight away this one's going to be really naughty so if you can't keep it sort of in front like so um, hang on, where's this, one? this one's meant to be over here so just twist them around gently because they've got them on the wire it doesn't matter like so right, so you can keep it kind of twisty in the ways that you want it if you're finding like I say so pull this one over here and this one back over this side or pull it over this side so it kind of gives a, a twisty Sweet pea is, is kind of a, a viney, very viney part, so it, it, it does kind of spread about and, and grip into other things with tendrils. And I don't know if that's what they're called, but I know that on other plants they're called tendrils. So, and then just kind of push them in the middle of each other and, and into the middle. I don't like a gappy center sort of thing, so you've got something like that. And there you have, ladies and gentlemen, your sweet pea. Like so. 
Now I hope that helps. I hope I haven't confused anyone. Any questions, let me know. Anything you think that I could find that would work, especially on dry clay. Um, I'm all open to suggestions and my ears are open because I'm really struggling with some certain flowers. The freesia is such a thin um, petal that I make. I'm struggling there to find and do it before it gets baked. But obviously, I can't find anything right now. So if you have any suggestions, please do leave them in the comments box. Hit that subscribe button and you won't miss any videos that I'm going to be releasing. They're all majority of them are going to be flowers for a while. Um, I really enjoyed doing the flowers and I want to continue doing some and learning them. Um, I look at other people on the internet, on YouTube, whatever, and I do massive amount of researches. And then I pick what I want to do with each one. What works for me? And you should do the same. Stick to what works for you. Otherwise, you'll find it very, very difficult to have a little go at it. But they are very simple, and I'm sure you'll agree they're beautiful. And when you get them in a posy, which, bear with me, um, let's pull the little one up. Mm, that's not the little one. No, that's the big one. Sorry, thanks. Okay. So, my daughter hasn't taken these home yet, which is just as well. So, if you can see here, there's your sweet pea, but because they're so bendy and, and flexible and great for putting anywhere, they fill a hole and you can fill it by moving them around. So there's another one under there, which is coming from this one here. They really are pretty. And then we've got another one here. Again, a different colour again. It's whatever you like and whatever works for you. Okay, so there you go. Thank you for watching. We're going to do some other videos at some point of these ones. Um, and I'll let you know when. But if you watch and subscribe, it will let you know when I'm putting on a video. Okay. Um, and you'll never miss another one. So thank you for watching. I'll speak to you soon.